Jake Paul getting in there versus Mike Tyson. Does it interest you? And, and how do you see that fight going down on, in July? Not at all. Not at all. Oh, Tyson versus that Jake might Paul be the would way. be the best fight ever. Jake Paul's the only white boy I know that the white boys hate. Canelo Alvarez has turned his attention to the highly anticipated matchup between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, providing a complete breakdown that has captivated fans and experts alike. In another twist, Joe Egan, the former sparring partner of Tyson, wants to be on the undercard of his fight with Jake. Egan's sights are set on facing none other than Logan Paul, the elder sibling of Jake. Egan also expressed his admiration for Jake, acknowledging his bravery in deciding to box against Tyson. Logan Paul. My name is Joe Egan, a seven times Irish boxing champion and sparring partner to the great Mike Tyson, who your brother, Jake Paul, is going to get in a box. I admire that man so much, having the courage to box one of the most ferocious punches of our era. In recent years, Egan has been keen on a showdown with John Fury, renowned as Tyson Fury's father. Despite his persistent efforts, Fury has consistently brushed aside his invitations. Egan said that John Fury lacked courage, pointing out that when he stepped forward, John Fury showed no interest in engaging. Frustrated by this, the 59-year-old has now shifted his focus towards Logan. John Fury hasn't got any courage. I stepped forward and he didn't want to know. Soft as shit, John Fury. You, like your brother, I'm sure, has courage. So why don't you get in and me and you can box? Egan remarked on Logan Paul's previous boxing match with Dylan Danis, noting the severe beating that was given to Danis. Egan assured that he would not offend in any manner. Instead, it would merely be a contest between two fighters exchanging punches, with the outcome being decided by the better man on the night. You boxed that Dylan, the cage fighter, and you gave him a savage beating. I know he offended you, and you're done right to give the man a beating. I won't offend you in any way. It will be just two fighting men getting in and exchanging punches. On the flip side, even seasoned champions such as Barry McGuigan express apprehension from Mike Tyson as he steps into the ring to face Jake Paul. McGuigan is acutely aware of the intricate web of challenges awaiting Iron Mike as he contemplates a return to the ring. He is eager to express his perspective on the former heavyweight champion's potential comeback. Speaking to The Sun, Barry McGuigan said, You can be sure money's got something to do with it. The governing body should be seriously badly reprimanded for that. Getting a 57-year-old guy into the box, that's just really stupid and irresponsible responsible. Echoing Dana White's sentiments from a recent interview, McGuigan acknowledges the allure of irresistible offers and the collective efforts to ensure Mike Tyson's ease. Nevertheless, he said, Tyson shouldn't be near a boxing ring at 57 years old. You must be joking. Never. It's just irresponsible. It's very dangerous. McGuigan harbors reservations about the legendary boxer's decision, despite the well-intentioned support surrounding him. He also slammed influencers like Jake Paul. McGuigan added, I can still beat most of them on chin-ups and press-ups. The problem with so many of these influencers boxing is that the general public think anybody can do it. They can't. That's what annoys the professional fighters about these influencers. Such actions, according to McGuigan, not only undermine the achievements of a seasoned professional like Tyson, but also detract from his legacy as a pivotal figure in boxing. He added, they're trying to steal headlines in the sense, okay, let's bring in Mike Tyson. Because he's done it all, it just discredits what he's done in his career. He's the face of boxing. In response to Jake Paul's bold move in challenging the seasoned Mike Tyson to a fight, McGuigan wasted no time in expressing his thoughts. The former Irish champion had this to say, Jake Paul's not going to put on his YouTube channel when he spars badly or when he feels crap and he's upset and he's crying or he's frustrated. He's only putting on the good days. Kids just want to see glitz and glamour and gossip, McGuigan continued, emphasizing the challenging nature of the sport and the impossibility of faking one's way to a world title. He highlighted that one cannot hope to succeed in boxing by simply showing up one day without having undergone any training. McGuigan added, This sport's a real hard sport, and you can't fake it. You can't just suddenly get to a world title. You can't just turn up one day without any training. You've got to put the hours and work in, and it's brutal. Meanwhile, Conor McGregor doubts he'll ever truly retire from fighting. He is gearing up for a return after a three-year hiatus due to injury and eagerly anticipates the showdown with Michael Chandler scheduled for this summer. Connor sets his sights on emulating the great Mike Tyson, who, at 57 years young, is gearing up to take on Jake Paul. McGregor told TNT Sports,
sports. Look at Mike Tyson now, he's fighting Jake Paul. He fought Roy Jones also. So there you go, that's an older guy. When he was fighting Roy Jones Jr., something that really stuck out to me was that Mike Tyson was asked. Roy Jones, also an aged guy, retired for so long. Why? Recalibrate your competition. McGregor remains steadfast in his belief that there are yet thrilling battles awaiting him against opponents of similar age. He pledges to go to great lengths to bring these matches to fruition, driven by the enduring desire of fans to witness such encounters. McGregor added, There's a reason that in jiu-jitsu tournaments there's like the veteran division in all this, so I don't really feel like I could ever call it a day until I'm laid out flat, and that's it. In a box and going down into the ground, that's when I'll call it a day. Two years prior to the actualization of a Paul vs. Tyson boxing spectacle, Iron Mike shared his insights regarding the potential outcome of a face-off with The Problem Child. The iconic heavyweight discussed the theoretical match on the Full Send podcast. In his fifth decade, Tyson remained confident that age wouldn't hinder him enough for Paul or anyone else to defeat him. Asserting confidently, he stated that not only would he emerge victorious against Paul, but he'd do so with ease. Could you fuck up? Oh, I'm so f***ing easy. You think? Yeah, but How I would never, I would never, I would never. I believe it's my own family. Everybody loves this little white mother You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, sh**. Tyson commented on Paul with a mix of admiration and affection, describing him as incredibly bold and fearless. He expressed his fondness for Paul, and his remarks highlighted his surprise and respect for Paul's audacity. In his conviction, Tyson harbored the certainty of prevailing over Paul should their paths of combat intersect. Yet, he adamantly professed an aversion to engaging in such a confrontation. Ironically, events have unfolded to contradict his stance, as a boxing showdown between the two is now slated for July 20th. Oh, so you guys balls when you see a white boy with balls you know fuck i'm talking about from real but like fuck you mother yeah fuck. but you were yo but time out would you <laughs> due to his seasoned years the showdown with paul has sparked widespread disapproval throughout the combat sports community with numerous voices alleging that the problem child is taking advantage of tyson for his own gain this event also signifies a regression to past behaviors for paul who has faced significant backlash for consistently challenging opponents past their prime wait wait would you pop would you knock him out <laughs> Uh -huh. How fast would you know? Would it be like Tyson when you were 19, 19 seconds? Yeah, but no, nah, man. He's, let him have his fucking reign, man. Let him have his <laughs> Yeah, but what time. if he stepped up and he's like, yo, Tyson, you're a pussy. Let's go. And nah, he's not going to say you. that. He'd be like, Maybe man, that's well, one fight you. Dana would get behind. Yo. That. Ryan Garcia, a luminary in the realm of boxing, has recently unveiled his forecast for the impending showdown, promising to stir quite a commotion within the boxing community. Garcia, while speaking on X Spaces, expressed his belief that Mike Tyson would only need four punches to defeat Jake Paul, quickly adding that even one solid hit from Mike could end the match. If, if, if this is like really going down and like you're not like it's not pre-planned. I'm not saying it is, bro. I'm just saying like if it's not and it's a real hey, bro, like I'm going to pray for you, bro. Because this like, bro, you're <laughs> nuts. Yeah. Garcia shared this view based on his personal encounters with Tyson. Further elaborating on Tyson's imposing presence, Garcia remarked on the immediate and palpable sense of intimidation one feels in Tyson's presence, highlighting Tyson's exceptional stature and the clear reason behind people's fear of him. Um, I just think Mike is like a whole different animal, bro. I've met him in person as you have, and the dude is built different. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah, mean, he's strong. He's right? strong. Like just shaking his hand I, yeah. when we just filmed this. I've never felt a hand stronger than that yeah. before. Like. And I don't know if he wasn't like squeezing. He wasn't like trying to squeeze. It was, a, it was, it was like real. It was just like real. And I was like, oh. Jake Paul is convinced that his forthcoming boxing bout with Mike Tyson has the potential to become the biggest fight the world will ever see. However, Canelo Alvarez won't be among the spectators, as the boxing sensation expressed to TMZ Sports that he holds absolutely no interest in the match. As the highly anticipated showdown between Paul and Tyson looms in July, curiosity stirred about Canelo's inclination to witness the spectacle. Regrettably for Jake, the answer resounds with a resounding no. Not really, not, not even interested. No. Nothing. Do you think it's it's good for boxing, not good for boxing? No. There exists a backstory between Paul and Canelo. Paul persistently challenges Canelo to a bout. Although the latter has softened his stance towards the online sensation's involvement in the sport, he unequivocally asserts that their paths won't intersect within the ring. Canelo acknowledged a somewhat positive aspect to the situation, Netflix's decision to host the event on its platform. A lot of people think that Netflix is, is good for boxing. I think Netflix is good for boxing, but at that a special fight, I think Netflix is doing something wrong there. I think 
and Netflix being involved, yes, it's good, but no in that kind of fight. However, he sees it as a major missed opportunity for the streaming giant to make Paul versus Tyson its inaugural card. When it comes to battles in the ring, there's one showdown that Canelo is eagerly anticipating. His imminent clash with the undefeated Jaime Mungia. He articulated the significance of this bout, particularly as it coincides with Cinco de Mayo weekend. I think it's more show than a fight. And, and and he he wins his last fight and he of course calls you out and then two days later he's fighting a near 60 year old mike tyson yeah um in this uh, at this point i'm not interested in that kind of fight i always try to to fight in 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 these days because you know it's very important for our people from mexican now we know that the rules for tyson versus paul have been revealed in the event of the crossover clash not being approved as a pro bout organizers are eager to secure official sanctioning for the fight aiming to elevate it to the status of a professional contest under the jurisdiction of the texas boxing commission nevertheless tyson must undergo an electroencephalogram and an electrocardiogram prior to receiving approval for his match happy punch reports that the regulations are still pending official approval as the TLDR is currently reviewing the promoter's proposal. TLDR communications manager Telemange recently told USA Today, it's pretty common for a promoter to request a date several months out but not immediately provide the proposed card. They want to be sure that they've secured the date with us since we'll have to make sure we have appropriate staffing available for any event. If official approval for the match as a professional bout cannot be obtained, it will instead be arranged as an exhibition. Allegedly, the contestants will engage wearing 16 ounces gloves Gloves, contrasting with the typical 10 ounces gloves used in professional fights. The match is set to unfold with rounds lasting two minutes each, departing from the conventional three-minute duration. Additionally, scoring will not be determined by a panel of judges. Mange added, the promoter will need to submit proposed cards before we determine whether a particular contest would be considered as an exhibition or a professional fight or how a proposed exhibition might be structured. However, Nakisa Badarian, the manager of Jake Paul, took to uploading a video vehemently refuting these regulations as nothing more than a fabrication. He sought to provide the sole verified information regarding the fight, which as of now bears no resemblance to the purported rules in question. Badarian, an integral member of Jake Paul's entourage, diligently keeps tabs on Tyson's training regimen. He provided insights into the situation, addressing rumors about ticket sales for the event. He said, Breaking news, there is no news. Stop spreading fake news. There's no truth regarding Jake Paul Mike Tyson. Here's what is true one. Mike Tyson is in unbelievable shape and training like he hasn't in many, many years and is looking scary for Jake Paul. 2. There are no tickets for sale. 3. Over 85,000 people have signed up to get access to tickets when they go on sale. This is going to be a historic event. Despite the recent revelations, apprehensions persist regarding Mike Tyson's welfare, given his advancing age and the inherent risks associated with taking blows to the head. Figures such as Dana White and Eddie Hearn have voiced strong opposition to witnessing Tyson enter the ring with a YouTuber. Stephen Hughes, a senior lecturer in medicine at Anglia Ruskin University, has been openly expressing concern regarding the grave injuries Tyson might encounter. He said, In older people, the brain tends to lose volume. This lengthens the bridging veins and makes them more vulnerable to rupture. Bleeding from these torn veins causes a collection of blood that presses on the brain. This causes confusion, loss of consciousness, neurological disability, and in some cases, death. Ultimately, only when Tyson steps into the ring will we ascertain his preparedness for such a bout. However, the training footage featuring his chiseled physique evokes a sense of awe, maintaining remnants of the speed he once possessed in his prime. While Mike Tyson looks pretty amazing in this video, we know that he has gained notoriety for his affection for cannabis, even reportedly being under its influence during his bout with Andrew Gulotta. He embraced a new habit of indulging in marijuana ever since retiring from the ring, openly expressing his regret for not incorporating the drug into his illustrious career earlier. Iron Mike opened up on smoking weed before the fight he told the Dan Patrick show, I only did it to get high one time when I was fighting. When I fought Gulotta, that's the only time I smoked weed and fought. In October 2000, Tyson squared off against the Polish heavyweight Golota. Golota's surrender on his stool after enduring two rounds of pummeling stirred disapproval from the audience. However, subsequent revelations unveiled the severity of his injuries. Tyson adamantly declined to comply with a pre-match urine examination, yet he eventually consented to one post-match, only to have the results later reveal traces of marijuana. Tyson revealed, It didn't affect me. It affected Golota. They fined me a couple of hundred dollars for that stuff. Tyson's stoppage win was overturned to a no contest by the Michigan Commission, and he was fined $200 
$150,000. Despite marijuana not being classified as a performance-enhancing drug, Tyson explained how it benefited him in the fight. Tyson added, I broke his cheekbone, his eye socket, his rib. I should have been doing this from the beginning. I said, wow. I got fined for that, of course, but it was worth every bit of it. I think of it as an enhancer. It makes me better, even in the ring. The punches don't hurt as much. Tom Aspinall, the UFC's interim heavyweight champion, voices apprehension regarding Mike Tyson's choice to confront Jake Paul, warning of potential risks. The impending clash between Tyson and Paul has stirred significant excitement. Yet, Tyson's advancing age, nearing 60, injects an aura of unpredictability. During an interview with OLBG, Aspinall advised Tyson to avoid overburdening himself post-retirement. He said, training for a fight gives you so much discipline and health and confidence and all that good stuff. So if Mike Tyson's training, that's fantastic because he obviously is getting up there in age, but he still looks great. Aspinall, the UFC's interim heavyweight title holder, holds reservations about Tyson's decision to confront Jake Paul, suggesting it might be a risky move for the former boxing legend. Paul, being 30 years junior to the seasoned former world champion Tyson, seems to have retained a significant portion of his formidable punching prowess. This dynamic has sparked concerns for both contenders. According to Aspinall, as far as getting punched in the head after all the getting punched in the head he's done over the years, I'd rather not see it, I guess. It's meant to be entertainment, I guess, but it's not my scene. Some people love tennis, that's everything to them. For me, very little interest in tennis, and it's the same for this. I'm sure people will watch, but I don't enjoy this stuff. Opinions are diverse regarding the impending fight, with former Pittsburgh Steelers standout, now boxer, Le'Veon Bell, confidently predicting a knockout conclusion. Bell believes Iron Mike will have a strong showing early on, but will eventually tire and get knocked out. The former NFL running back responded to this on X. Bell's idea appears to be centered mostly on Tyson and Paul's age difference. He tweeted, Bro, he is going to be able to do that for about 30 seconds in round one, then he will tire and get knocked out. But I'm not surprised that this is the perspective from people who don't fully understand boxing. Bell seemed to be challenging Paul to a fight a few months back and boasted about his ability to beat the social media celebrity. Bell said on the No Jumper podcast in August, I will stop him. I will stop Jake Paul. It's hard to knock somebody out if they don't want to be knocked out. He's not doing eight rounds with me. There's nobody in that influencer sh that's making it eight rounds with me, for a fact. Meanwhile, Tyson released a statement saying he was excited about stepping into the ring to face Paul. He said, I'm very much looking forward to stepping into the ring with Jake Paul at the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. He's grown significantly as a boxer over the years, so it will be a lot of fun to see what the will and ambition of a kid can do with the experience and aptitude of a goat. On the other hand, Jake Paul gave a very telling answer when asked if he could beat Mike Tyson back in 2020. After the shocking announcement, he wrote on social media, to which his shameless warning was criticized by followers. Paul's promoter retorted to Matchroom CEO Eddie Hearn's candid assessment of the fight booking, taking no prisoners in his candor. The problem child is extremely confident of beating Iron Mike, but he wasn't as optimistic back in 2020. When he was a budding professional, Paul was asked whether he could beat Tyson, to which he replied, no. Do you think you could beat Mike Tyson right now? No. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> In a recent statement, Paul reflected on his journey, noting the remarkable transition from gaining viral fame for knocking out Nate Robinson during Mike Tyson's undercard in his second professional fight, to less than four years later challenging Tyson himself. Paul said, It's crazy to think that in my second pro fight, I went viral for knocking out Nate Robinson on Mike Tyson's undercard. Now, less than four years later, I'm stepping up to face Tyson myself to see if I have what it takes to beat one of boxing's most notorious fighters and biggest icons. Whether as a milestone in sports entertainment or a chapter in the ongoing dialogue about the sport's future, Tyson vs. Paul embodies the intrigue, complexity, and undying appeal of boxing to a global audience. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.